is Janet the beekeeper. This is our first sign plant right there. Oh, really? Our first sign contract, yes, since we came to New Orleans. Wonderful. So you sign your contract first. We're going to make sure we take care of you the right way. Oh, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the first place I stop, too. That's great. That's great. The first place I come in. That's the, that's Wonderful. All right. The beekeeper. Now you the know beekeeper. my history. <laughs> so we in New Orleans now. What's the first thing you got to get taken care of for you? Start looking around and doing your thing. First thing we need to do is get these 32 feet off the back of this truck. Mm -hmm. Get the lodging, get that set up, and then, and then we basically set up shop inside. Set up the command center and log out some calls and see what we can get set up for tomorrow. We already have an idea of what we're going to do. We're going to do some training. Then at the same time, we need to call some clients that we were getting phone calls from earlier today and see if we can uh, um, put to schedule some appointments and we go out and see them. We're only going to be here for a limited amount of days, so we're going to try to maximize the opportunity. So what's the benefit of coming to an area like this already with a trailer as opposed to just uh, finding a hotel? Well, the hotels tend to be, uh, they're pretty pricey. And then at the same time, um, you know, it's not as convenient as having all the resources. We have all the resources here in the trailer. We have Wi-Fi, we have stove, refrigerator, we have shower, we have basically everything we need. And, uh, you know, we can come and go as we please with no problem. Um, and then it's also, you know, if any time we need to, you know, be mobile and move to a different area, whatever it may be, that's, that's also part of all we got to do is hook up and go. So it's very convenient for us to have our own uh, uh, situation to where we have a, a space to, you know, um, lodge and, and, and that's mobile. Damage from the storm? Huh? Oh yeah. Who's up? Yeah, they have office damage. Spot? The office damage. Miss Melanie? How you doing? So what what happened to your office building here? Do you own this building also? Yeah, yeah, no, he's here, he's here, yeah, he's here right here. No, I'm talking about the one with the blue tarp on it. What, what happened to it? Right. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Been cool lately, man. Yeah, that's yeah, the reason why. All right, all right. <laughs> exactly. But what happens is I'm a public adjuster. See, I'm in the web. So I work on, <laughs> on behalf of the business owners and the homeowners. So is the insurance company taking care of this for you, or are you doing this out of your own pocket? Is this the only exit? Get up. Yeah, I'm gonna need y'all to scoot up. Number nine. Number nine? Oh, no, wait. I'm going with you. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. So that's why I was calling. I saw the blue tarp and I was like, uh, uh, I think it was a couple of days. You know, uh, how could I help you? You know, the question is, could I help? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Sunday.
Who I gotta be. All right, so we get into town last night set up shop what's the first thing that that you thinking about that you do very next day well now what we're doing is we're going to meet up with some other PAs and attorneys and uh, we're going to talk shop we're basically going to talk about what's going on out here in New Orleans and talk about the New Orleans uh, um, insurance uh, the insurance department and we're gonna talk about claims and how they're being addressed. Because they have some new laws that's been out and we're gonna make sure everything is up to speed. And then this afternoon, we're gonna be going out to Gabriel, Louisiana to check on our first client. We have a client out there that uh, has a claim on his property in which he was underpaid by the insurance company. And so that'll be our first client that we go out and see and see how we can help them out. So for, for, for a public adjuster coming into a new territory, uh, unfamiliar setting, but prepared. Is it, is it important to talk to other uh, restoration professionals and public adjusters that's already been out here, or or should you just uh, rely on your own uh, information and abilities and just get to it? Oh yes, it's very important to talk to other restoration companies. We met some guys. We met restoration companies out of uh, Florida yesterday, and and we met a roofer out of Alabama. And yes, it's very important to get information from them. Just talk and talk about what's going on, and and uh, you know, listen to what's been going on in their world and since they've been out here, and uh, um, and see how we can help. We could possibly help them also. So we we want to talk to as many people as we can in different industries and see what kind of information we can get to help them out and to help out these uh, homeowners. You can never have too much inf more information. Absolutely, you can never have too much information. The more information you have the better it's going to be to be able to do your job to best help these folks. Now, as some public adjusters out here who've maybe been out here for a week, maybe two, haven't even signed their first client, you know, don't give up. But how did you already have somebody that's willing, ready, and able to trust what you say to get this done, taken care of from, from day one? I mean, that, that's the key to starting your business. I mean, you go through that phone and you, you start calling friends and family. Uh, when you start calling friends and family and asking them, you know, is everything okay? Do they have any friends in New Orleans area, in Louisiana area that, that has been damaged by the storm? Or just do they know anybody? And so I called my mother and she called up one of her folks that, that it was actually a guy that towed her truck a year ago. Uh, she became good friends with her. She tore a truck that got that got into an accident and uh, became good friends with him. And and uh, he and he was the one that uh, basically cracked the ice. And once you crack that ice, man, now his pastor um, has uh, been denied by by good old uh, the uh, the good old snake farm. And uh, so we're gonna go out and see him also. And and then. Uh, um, I had a cousin that has a friend that's basically been underpaid for her roof. So, you know, we just go through that phone and call all your friends and family and, 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 and uh, anybody that you probably co-workers from back in the days. And that's where it starts. And then you just build from there. Once you grab onto a neighborhood, a lot of times you can just build from there. So don't be too proud to reach out to family, friends and peers and old colleagues from referrals. Even if you got an ex-girlfriend, man, if she's in Louisiana, she probably needs your help. Absolutely. All right. So day one, headed to gather some information from PAs and attorneys who's already been working the area for a while, and then immediately going to assist 
a client in the good old NOLA. Okay, this is the second full day here in New Orleans. How you feel about your progress so far? Oh man, it's great. It's great. So <clears throat> on yesterday we had some training that we've done with the great Sean Hodge law firm and also Cal Spoon with insurancebusters.net. And then we come out and then uh, we left there. We left there and we had our first client. We, we, we uh, basically went out and saw our first property. It's 5,000 square foot property in which, uh, you know, they were basically underinsured. I mean, un they, 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 the insurance company just basically underpaid them. Um, when I looked at their, their documents, it seems like, the, the, you know, this, the, the reason why these guys are able to do 100 claims a week a thousand claims a month is because they basically have a scripted document to where they're giving, you know, 64 square foot for a bedroom ceiling and they're giving 10 square foot for a bathroom wall and, and they're basically just running through houses giving the same amount of square footage for everything and they're not really documenting the actual damage. So, so uh, uh, it was a great, it was a great um, uh, opportunity for us to meet the New Orleans you know, you know the New Orleans and 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 the homeowners and and uh, listen to the lingo and listen to them call me baby about five or six times. And, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. So um, um, the homeowner that that we met, he, he owns about 35 properties. So so it's a it's a great start to uh, get us rocking and rolling if we're able to uh, actually go in and do an assessment on everything that he has and make sure that we're good to go. So. That's the plan, um, and then uh, 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 we ended it with a, a nice meal at Bobby A. Bear's restaurant, and um, uh, a nice place, nice city, nice food, and and um, and so today's a new day. Yeah, and uh, everybody do got that lingo. It ain't just on a uh, on a Cash Money, Young Money song. Everybody talk with that swag, that baby, that uh, you know how, how that feel. So, so I noticed when you got there. It seemed like the homeowner was ready to get right into it as far as letting you know about the damages and that. But you, you talked about everything else, seemed like, for about 30 minutes. That family, you know, this, that, and the third. What, what went into that? Is that something that you always do? You you, you get to know them first? Or, 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 or unlike some people that just, you know, start getting right into the claim, why do you do that and what's the reason? Yeah, the key to every relationship, man, people only deal with folks that they like you know what i mean so you want to make a friend out of them you want to you know what i mean you want to make them feel comfortable you want to you want to make you want to ease their mind and ease the thought process that they're going to be taking advantage of because that's very key and that's very i mean for what these folks have been going through already they feel like they've been taken advantage of so you want to let them know that you're here to help and now i'm getting you know it's, it's becoming that i'm being called a superhero you know and that's what you want to be you know you you want to be robin hood and, and you want to just come in and you want to make a friend out of them and make sure make sure that they understand that they're comfortable and and you want to be comfortable in dealing with them because you know it's not a simple process and some folks may think it is but it's not a simple process and we're here to help 
but at the same time, you know, we're going into environments, to situations that we've never been before, and they're dealing with folks that they've never dealt before, and we're dealing with, you know, a lot of different aspects of, uh, of, of, of life, of finances, of living, and insurance, and policies, and everything, so, so, so making a friend is very important, and very important in everything that we do. And I noticed that once you did start getting into the business of why you were there, one of the first things you did was look at the pop, what was the estimate that the prior insurance carrier just wrote before you started going through the house completely. What was the reason for you checking that out before you did your own assessment? Well, I just want to uh, uh, look for for you know I want I'm looking for that consistency in in what he did you know looking for that consistency if I'm seeing the same thing that. In, in New Orleans as an estimator would do in a property in Florida that I probably just seen last week. And I'm like, wow, you know, they're, they're kind of scripted in what they're doing. So then I know that there's problems. You know, it's not being done the right way. They're really not doing a thorough investigation, you know. Um, um, and so that being the case, um, that gets me in the right perspective. Also, I'm looking at that estimate. I'm kind of just, just looking to see what they see. Looking at they see what they see, what happened you know, and what kind of story did they tell? And, um, and, and then, I, you know, when I'm looking at the story that they tell, it kind of gives me an idea of where to start and, and uh, you know, and, and where to go with the, uh, with the situation. But at the same time, we're just gonna start all over from the beginning and do it all over again anyway. But, you know, just wonder how they think. And one thing that I saw you do that a lot of the adjusters don't do, not just, insurance carrier adjusters but even public adjusters is you got up in that attic what what did you, what's the reason for you getting up in the attic and what were you able to observe being up there oh man we want to get up in the attic because we want if the roof if they have roof damage we want to get up in the attic and look underneath to make sure that you know uh the attic space didn't get damaged itself so so then we can see the undersiding of the decking at the same time we found mold and mildew on the actual siding of the property so so that's very important to go into the attic and check every aspect of the property as much as you can actually get to so that you can verify that everything is you know so we can get this house back to pre-loss condition we're looking for an indemnity and and, and, the, and the point of looking for indemnity you know you need to inspect the entire property to get to indemnity and i saw that you documented that the decking wasn't the typical OSB because all new buildings are that oriented strand board where they compress a bunch of wood chips together. It's 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 less expensive for the homeowner that's getting a house built and less expensive for the property builder, the the people who build houses to sell. But also when you observe plywood under there, you know, all right, this is a, a more expensive material. That's another thing that you documented under there. So what what what's what's the importance of all right this this isn't typical let me document not only is this uh plywood not osb but the nails are coming through the plywood which means that it's no longer a solid surface correct so the plywood is damaged so we need to be able to replace all that decking and it was a uh, half inch plywood and uh we need to replace all that decking to make sure that um we bring it back to pre-loss condition and you know that homeowner built that property and he built it solid man he built it solid so so it's very important that he goes back into a solid property you know once all of everything is taken care of so so yeah we made sure that we documented that um we documented you know his hardy board siding that he had on the property and also the mildew that was on the inside of the uh um of the sheathing of the actual siding so on on on, on um, every gable of the home even on the rakes so none of that was on the estimate um, on the actual carrier's estimate so we want to make sure we, we we document all that all that the homeowner even had you know when we looked at the exterior you know he had eight foot fencing and even had a pool <clears throat> in which none of that stuff was documented so we want to make sure that we we document everything that that we didn't see on the carrier's estimate and and rewrite it for them and put them in good shape absolutely and another thing that i noticed that you did was and, and partly a good amount i think has to do with that relationship building that you did for them first 30 minutes that you were there 
is that the homeowner, even prior to you showing them what you can do, to exit the highway, they were already road. talking about referrals. How did you get, get to that level to where people are offering you referrals before you even show them the value of what you offer? And does anything, does that, any part of that have to do with you being such a hot, uh, uh, selling at a high level as a high ticket salesman prior to becoming a public adjuster? Well, yeah, re referrals are very important, especially in this business. And, and, and so, you know, I've, I've worked, I've, I've sold roofs for Home Depot for 15 years and, and, and referral business was, was probably 20% of my business in Home Depot. But here, what I've noticed in, in, in the public insurance industry, um, uh, referrals are going to be probably about 50% of your business, if not more. So it's very, very, very important that we, we, we take care of our, our customers the right way, take care of the insured the right way so that they can extend our services and extend the opportunity that we can do to everybody else. So yes, he did mention his pastor. He mentioned that he knew a lot of folks, but he said his pastor of his church knew even more than I knew. So that being the case, you know, we could possibly be, be, be uh, linking into uh, a, a great, great amount of homeowners that we can go out and help and, and put them in a good situation to where they're able to uh, get back to normal. All right, and, and prior to us going there, we did link up with Cal, Spoon, and Sean Hodge, as you mentioned. Is there anything that you picked up there? You're like, oh, okay. I can use this information to help so many people. Any Anything that you picked up? Oh, man. <clears throat> I mean, Sean spoke about FEMA and, and the fact that FEMA is able to help. You know, FEMA has extended their, their, their opportunities to help folks for another 180 days, if, uh, if I'm recalling it correctly. And, um, and then also, along with that, um, small business owners that are out there helping to uh, helping these folks recover in the event of the storm have an opportunity to go out there and uh, obtain financial help from FEMA and which that's a good thing because they can put you in a situation to where if you're in a bind financially um, you know stabilizing yourself here in, in the Louisiana area you can reach out to FEMA and, and, uh, and get help and put yourself in a more comfortable situation so that you can actually work more in efficiently and taking care Exit of the folks. The highway, oh yeah, and I do be, and I do believe because it was a lot of information that they shared, but I do believe it was the small business administration to where if if you are somebody who's out here helping out uh, people in, in any facet of the restoration industry, insurance and restoration, you can get a a, a very low interest rate loan from the Small Business Administration and they'll hook you up and they'll get it taken care of for you. Uh, as well as the Small Business Administration also made it be known that uh, it don't matter if you're not a business, if you're uh, somebody that's dealing with issues right now, you can also qualify for a low interest rate loan to get you back to where you was. Oh man, so where are we headed now? We're headed to Boot Tape or Boot T. Boot it! Booty, Louisiana. Uh, we're we're going out there to do an event with uh, 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 um, um, uh, I believe it's called HBCU's um, Hurricane Ida event um, uh, that we're doing out there in Walmart in Booty, Louisiana. I believe on Highway 90. Um, we're headed out there to do an event with uh, along with attorneys and other PAs and also uh, some contractors will be out there to, uh, to assist in any way we can. You know, if we can just help the homeowners, help talk their homeowners through their situations and help them deal with their insurance companies, that's what we're there to do. Um, if they need our help as far as our public adjusting services, we can sign them up and we will be doing that also. We're just there to help. We're just, just, just basically, we're ears to listen, and miles to talk, and then we have the brains with the information and that we can help them the best way we can. What you, hold on, so what do you guarantee me? 
What I'm guaranteeing you is, if I go into Walmart and ask them, if I may, and ask and walk, ask the first associate if I'm able to print out papers, my oldest daughter, with a master's degree in sociology, is going to be able to answer that question better than a Walmart associate. What do you mean, answer better? Answer it more accurately. Give me. Uh, but, but, all right. So let, since, since you're trying to be funny with words, let, let's go ahead and say this. The situation is, you wanted to know if Walmart could print out some documents for you, correct? Yes, sir. And instead of asking Walmart, you called your daughter. I called my daughter. And she told you, no, they don't. No, they don't. And because she told you no. I believe it. You have no intentions at all to go into Walmart and try to print out any documents. And you said, if you guarantee, if you ask them, mm -hmm. they're going to say the same thing that she said. Yes. That they don't do it. I'm guaranteeing, if I do get an answer, it's going to be the same answer, sir. But I'm almost, And the answer is going to be, no, we don't print documents for people. Correct. And I'm about 50% sure that when I go in there, the first person I ask won't even know the answer to my question. Because you're going to ask the, the greeter at the door that's doing this for retirement. Okay, so then the, the apartment that you have to go to will be in the back of the store. So then my time is more valuable than walking in the back of that store. I'd rather go call my daughter, Bianca, <laughs> with the master's in sociology and <laughs> one of Walmart specialists. No, let, let's, let's, let's. You Come asking on. everybody, we're, we're about to bring in the genius. Hey, this is Zach. How you doing? Zach. Zach. Hold on. Can I give him the synopsis? Go ahead. So, he wants to know if Walmart prints documents. Instead of asking Walmart, he calls his daughter that has never worked for Walmart, and she told him no, so he is not going to ask. Now, I, I know, so, all right, so go ahead. Here's my scenario. We're talking about a Walmart associate or one of your children that you trust. <laughs> Who would you trust the most? To answer Even that to answer a question, question that has to do with Walmart. I just walked 500 feet and asked him. <laughs> <laughs> you're a smart man. <laughs> Zach, you're a bull rider, man. It's different, bro. You're different, bro. You're a different breed of a dude. No, man. he's a logical he's human man. He's a bull, man. <laughs> Listen. This is a special guy. There ain't many people in this world riding bulls. Those folks are special. I know some folks that's ridden bulls and I know some folks that's tried to ride bulls. And guess what? You know, I coached a kid named Moses that played tight end for me, he rode a bull. And Moses was a kid that would never stop trying. Over and over and over, Moses was slow. Moses couldn't catch, Moses couldn't block, he but Moses is gonna be there in time. <laughs> he's gonna be there on time, and he's gonna give you 150%. That's after he snapped his knee on the bull, and after he broke his hip on the bull, and everything else he's done on the bull. Moses is gonna give you 130% every time. And I did a, a podcast episode on reciprocity. Mm -hmm. This man gives so much value. Oh yeah. From day one, we they didn't even know us. Oh yeah! All he yeah. does oh, is give God. valuable, value. valuable information, and because of that, the way the country is right now, you got you got to bond with everybody and anybody you can. That's right. Everybody and everybody's got to look out for each other. Um, there's there's a million one things you can learn just by communicating with people and, and, and seeing different experiences. And, and this is Zach with Jubilee. How can they get in touch with you, Zach? You get in touch with him. Uh, Personal cell phone numbers, 903-471-7930. Got any construction needs, roofing, interior, exterior, uh, you just give me a call at that number. Uh, I'm available 24-7. Remember to tell them you're nationwide. I and mean, I have 40 locations nationwide. Insurance, all that. You know, we've got an office in Kenner, Louisiana. We've got offices in Florida, Texas, all over. So if you need anything, give that number a call. I'll be able to help you out. Office. That man's that. A dog with a tutu on. Excuse me.
feel so good you can't boo boo oh no when nothing was done to get me Okay. Uh, I think the strip mall was Lord of London. I don't know what they. I Lords met of, with those people. Okay. And and uh, I met with those, and you know, we went through the property and all that stuff. And he said he was going to write up everything, but I haven't heard from them either. I haven't heard from him. Okay. Okay. And then uh, we we have the trailer park that, uh, like I said, I don't know who they are. You have to get Melanie to to tell you who she finally got in touch with, if anybody. Okay. You know, and uh, and, and like I said, when the Jeffy came out, none of us were there. Which is the lady that runs the place upstairs. You know, and she showed him everything, you know, the police and in the apartment and all that stuff. And you know, they don't know what we're doing. You know, she don't know what's going on. She, you know, she was just. Accommodating the guy for the shit up, you know? Correct, correct. Yeah. So what we do is we take care of everything to start to finish. We take, we meet with the adjusters. We have set up all the appointments, make sure that the right people are in place so that they can give us access. But we do all the speaking. We do every, yeah. we, we come in and we'll do the estimate for you. And then uh, we will scope out the property and view the property on what it's, it's going to take. Calculated. To actually put it to get to uh, to get us where we need to go, um, and get you guys taken care. So of. you know, our expertise is actually part of our expertise is actually reading the policy, helping you understand the policy, the the exclusions, um, the 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 endorsements. You know, whether the sheds are covered, fences are covered, all these different things. We 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 go over this, you know, and make sure that every aspect of that policy is being is being uh, addressed in the event of uh, the damage that happened. And then, you know, uh, so you have the two-story building, and then you also have the building where Fingers is. That building, that yeah. roof needs to be replaced also. Don't know if it's leaking, but it definitely needs to be replaced. And then, oh, uh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And then uh, any, any uh, uh, you know, the fence and all that type of stuff, that may be under, you know, under another endorsement, others on your policy. Um, and so that being the case, then we need to go inside that property upstairs and make sure that we document all the interior damage, make sure that's good right, to go. Right. And then, you know, and then we move on to the next property, you know, whether it's the strip mall or whether it's, you know, uh, her personal property. And, and then what we will do is we will take care of all the insurance claims for her and make sure that everything is good to go and she's indemnified. That, that's probably what we need for the interpret all this stuff, you know, and, and the handle and stuff. Yeah. We also have two huge, beautiful pecan trees out there. I don't know if that's covered. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Absolutely, I mean, man. Especially pecan trees. Two, two, I mean, two beautiful. They used to produce every year, man. Did I'm they? Sure. Oh, man, oh, yeah. that would have been the best Christmas present for my mom ever, man. <laughs> She, yeah, oh, when yeah. I grew up, they had pecan trees over in Mississippi. My mom's over in Mississippi in Laurel. And, man, they had pecan yeah. trees all day. She, I'd always get a pecan pie, you know, for Thanksgiving. Yeah, but so there's no I more pecan that. trees over there, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 same thing. I grew up with a couple of big pecan trees. And pecan for all my whole life. And, uh, yeah, but two of them, the, the two pecan trees went down. Uh, everything else and all the other trees and stuff was, you know, looked okay, but the fence was the main thing, man. The fence was sort of messed up. Yeah. But yeah. I, like I said, I don't, you know how to read the policy. I don't, I don't know what's all covered this time. Okay. But the best stuff, yeah, to get, get, get back with Melanie. Okay. So, Mr. Darrell, I'm going to call her. But if you can do me a favor and let her know that you spoke to me, because I wanted to make sure, because she sent me your number and she wanted me to talk to you about it. So uh, yeah, let, yeah. let her know that you spoke to me and then I'm going to call her. We're on our way to uh, 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 scope out a property now. We got two of them that we have to get to, but I'm going to call her and talk to her about it. And then we're going to get on this thing for her. Hopefully we can get on. She wants us to help. And then uh, we'll, 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 we'll get you done. We'll get you taken care of. We'll make you proud. Okay, now, well, what's your name again? I'm sorry. My name is Ricardo. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be out there today. I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll handle 
I'm like the business guy. I handle all the properties that they have, you know? Correct. So we'll be back some you know, we'll be back by there sometime this afternoon. No guarantee that we'll you know, we'll see you. But uh, we yeah. would like to meet you. And uh, uh, I would like to meet you and then come by and see you and talk to you, give you a handshake. And then, uh, like I said, yeah. we'll get in touch with Miss Melanie and let her know that um, we'll, we'll, we'll help the... Uh, the uh, read the policy. We'll help y'all read the policy okay. and interpret understand all it. Interpret all that stuff and all that, yeah. <laughs> and interpret well, we'll, it. Okay. On. Okay. All right. Okay, man. All right. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. This is our first sign claim. Oh, really? Our first sign contract. Yes, since we came to New Orleans. You are the So you sign your contract first. We're going to make sure we take care of you the right way. Oh, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the first place I stopped, too. That's great. That's perfect. First place I come in. That's the best place. Wonderful. All right. The beekeeper. Now the you know my history. Yeah. <laughs> really? What's the difference between a bee and a wasp? A honeybee is the only bee that produces seed for the human consumption. Without them, you don't have, you don't have nothing that blooms. Well, what's a wasp? A wasp is a scavenger. Oh. It's a scavenger. They eat anything. They okay. Eat anything. So this is your fence. <laughs> you see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's every piece of my wood. My... I took every piece down, piece by piece. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So you got to know me. You got to do what you got to do. I got to do what I got to do. That's right. That's all my pencils. Let me get my thing. You um, got all these citrus trees. Huh? You got all these citrus trees. Okay, get you a tattoo. Absolutely delicious. What oh, you called it? Tattoo. So it's not an orange. Is it? Is we'll it? Get the this, we had to cut it down. This was a I'm trying to come back. Japanese plum. This is what? This is a satsuma. 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 Mm -hmm. This is my garage. Ooh. Okay, so so this, th is, this, is, this is this is your garage. garage. Right here, this is our property line. This is our property line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really one's a really one of the darker yellow one. Oh yeah, pick it out for me. Pick one out for me. Now the ones I have in the house is from the land. Thank you. Um, part of this tree you, can you can, can you get the policy? I mean the claim documents for me, please. Pardon me? The claim documents in the envelope. What about it? Can you bring that out, please? Sure. Thank you. You want to come in the house? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Ma, what I told you. What you got <laughs> under that car cover? <laughs> that's like a real car. Oh, that's nice. Ah, uh, the Chevy, Chevy Nova. Nova. Yes, sir. S Is this S. yours, sir? 1965. Uh, is yours? That's Chevy a nice Nova. car. Yeah. I like, oh, oh. Uh, oh, you got good engine? taste. Uh, we you have good this taste. Whole car. We went and picked it up in Gainesville, Florida. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Chevy Nova. Oh, watch this. How often do you drive it? Uh -huh. We used to, we were on the cover of cruising the coast one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, since he retired, ask him how much he's driving. How often do you drive it? You don't drive it anymore? No, uh, no, I just crank it up now. It's an expensive paperweight now? Huh? Oh, it's an expensive paperweight now, is what you said. Did, did he work for Narco? <laughs> oh, it looks nice. Good taste. Did he work for Narco? He worked for Barry A. Construction, his apartment. Mm -hmm. You see my garage? That's oh, a new garage door. Oh, there's that door. Mm, damn, it's the garage door. Ooh, wee. Paint still look good. All right, Jay. I used to know how to do all this. <laughs> it's somewhere. It's not, it's oh, so you don't have to pop it on the inside for these, huh? No, uh-uh. This is underneath. Jay, where grill. is it? In the grill. In, In the, the grill. grill. At the bottom. Where's that, Jay? You remember? Yeah. If you get my hand. Oh, that's not what it was. You see, it says right here. Oh, that's nice. 
If you can't run with the big dog, stay on the porch. Mm. <laughs> That's why you rebuild your porch, because uh, y'all on the, the porch now. The keys in there? <laughs> the keys inside the porch. Mm-hmm. Did it run that all? Mm. Alright, so you see the sticker on it? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it still got 123 sticker. He, he went and got it. Oh, the new oh, yeah. Re I keep update the registration. Mm -hmm. yeah, it has not been off the road in six years. Mm. He got it off the road one time and I had to go get him some gas. <laughs> oh, man. So this one here, you got to choke it up. Yeah. Pump that gas and put some gas in it. Yeah, 289. That's what the engine is. 289. Battery day. Mind I try to get some gas in that car. Yeah. He doesn't undo the battery or nothing, which he should. All that was for the electric fuel pump on it, and I'm having to. I believe it. <laughs> this is a no boy. Look at this. Yes, yes. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay. God Can bless we go America. inside? Yeah. God bless you. Got it, Jay. Beautiful car. <laughs> Beautiful car. Man, uh, that's a car. Now that's a car. All right, so we headed back after you being in Louisiana for the first time, a few days. What's on your mind? Man, what's on my mind is how, you know, how wonderful the people are over there in, in, in the bayou in Louisiana. Those are some nice folks. I'm, I'm going to enjoy helping them, you know, in the event of this storm. Um, we, we met a lot of folks. Um, we met a lot of folks. We made a lot, you know, quite a few contacts. We we have we, we're starting to develop some formulas and processes, and uh, we're going to put some things in place that that we're going to be very successful in taking care of and, and getting people taken care of, and uh, getting their getting their claims done the right way and making sure they're able to get as close as back to normal as possible. Now, you met a, a lot of people at this event uh, that you went to. Is any common things that you've noticed in the stories that they've been telling you about their encounters and interactions with their insurance carrier? Yeah, the stories is, you know, uh, they can't get in touch with the carriers. There's no communication, you know, they don't call back when they're trying to reach out to them to see what's going on with their claim. Um, you know, the, the, the adjusters are coming out and they're basically short and sweet, and, you know, in and out. Um, they're not spending the quality time in there to, uh, in, in, to do a proper assessment in the homes. Um, they're missing out on a lot of the damage and just, and, you know, and, and, and basically doing a cut and dry estimate on all the properties. So it's making it for a lot of work for us to do for them to actually, you know, bring them back to our, to indemnity. But you know, um, 
uh, 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 the process is going to be, you know, we're going to put it together and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's going to be enjoyable getting them done. But communication, the fact that they're not able to get in touch with anybody and hear back from, from folks, it's just, it's the key. So, yeah, uh, what, what it, one thing that I notice is the body language of the people. They, uh, between when they come up to you, then after you talk to them, they, they look kind of defeated. Uh, mo most of body language, 90% of com uh, communication is body language. Uh, head down, shoulders slumped forward, and after they talk to you, it seems like their head is up, their shoulders are back. Uh, did you notice that? And if, if you did, what do you think it was that made them change their posture? Oh man, these folks are getting excited. They, they literally get excited. Um, um, I have one, one, one of the customers we call the beekeeper. You know, she she gave us a bottle, a bottle two bottles of honey, and uh, you know, and, and and man, she is excited. Invited us to church. She's gonna tell the church about us. And yes, they get excited because they know they have help. They know they have somebody that's on their side that can understand what they don't understand. They know they have somebody that can work on the behalf of them and basically take the stress, remove the stress that they have on, on, on themselves and, and, and make sure everything is getting taken care of. They, they know that they can be at peace now. Seems like you, you gave them something to look forward to. Oh, absolutely, that was the plan. Just give them something to look forward to. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, good old saying, watch my smoke. Watch my smoke. So what would you say is the difference from prospecting just in a, a, a area that hasn't recently been hit by a catastrophe compared to the, the different areas of Louisiana we're in, New York, uh, Baton Rouge, well, La Place, La Place. The difference in prospecting is, you know, they need us, you know, they need us bad. You know, when, you, when you're driving in the neighborhoods, folks are standing outside talking about what's going on. You know, contractors are in the area up on roofs trying to get these roofs dried in. Um, you know, uh, 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 folks are on the phone with the insurance companies. They, they walk around with their policies and, and, and claim information in their hand. It's right there on the counter. As soon as you walk in the house, that's about the first thing you're going to see. Everybody's got folders and, and claims in their hand. And, 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 you know, and so that being the case, you know, that, that, that's, what you, that's what you're seeing. That's what you're experiencing. So you were there a total of three whole days. And in those three whole days, you got three wet signatures, three contracts, three new clients. And you were talking to a colleague that had been down there for maybe a couple weeks without even one client. What is the difference on how you engage them compared to how somebody else might? Well, the difference is, I mean, you know, the fact that I engaged them, the fact that, you know, I, I, I went to the, uh, and, and, and set up and, and basically gave back, you know, to the HBCU um, events in which is going to, you know, utilize the donations that we made to give uh, Christmas toys to the children. And then at the same time, what we did is we set up and we, and we made ourselves available to speak to homeowners that had issues, to speak to homeowners that didn't know what to do, to speak to homeowners and give them advice on how we can help or how they can help themselves, you know, and, and let them know that, you know, uh, you don't have to hire me to help. You can do it yourself. Just call me anytime, you know. So so that's what that, that's the difference. And, and the fact that, you know, when I offer them the fact that I can just talk to them over the phone and help them out, they, you know, they just don't want to do it or they don't know how to do it, you know. I got, I got, uh, 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 at the at the park where we were staying, you know where the RV is parked, we we inquired with the uh, manager of the the owner of the building, and 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 let her know that you know, uh, uh, let's talk about the insurance claim, and she's no, I don't want to talk about it, because she's tired of being tired, you know, tired of not getting any communication, not being able to understand. But when we get back, we'll take all that away from her and we'll take care of it for her. That's our plan. What about if people say that's all fine and good? Uh, historically, back colleges and universities, you're donating. 
that's all good. Uh, you're offering me to call you if and when I need to ask questions. Meanwhile, I know that's just you positioning yourself to get a new sale. Well, what is the difference? Why, out of all the public adjusters that ascended down onto Louisiana, why should they go with you? What's different about you? Um, I, I'm, I, you know, it's, it's. I don't know what their, what their aim is. I, I don't know what their thought process is. But the public adjusters that I collaborate with, they are usually, they, what they are telling me is they're there for the people. You know, the, uh, the fact that they're selling, you know, I'm not selling you anything. I'm offering you an opportunity that I can come in and help you, help yourself in your situation. So it's not a sale. You don't have to buy nothing from me. There's a fee to what we do, but at the same time, the state of Louisiana is the one who set the fee. And for the services being rendered, you know, anytime anybody goes and have services rendered, they, they usually pay a fee. You know, there's there's not all the, all the time that, you know, you get services rendered and there's no fee paid. So they, you know, they don't pump gas for you anymore. So those things just don't happen. So that being the case, you know, I have displaced myself from my family and gave the opportunity to these Louisiana families to be able to help them get back to normal. So, so, so the fact that, that we're doing that makes us different. You know, we're, we're not from Louisiana. We actually came from out of town. We came from Florida, displaced ourselves from our homes to be able to uh, take care of the Louisiana homeowners and res and also commercial, you know, commercial property owners. So it sounds like even though somebody might think your intentions might not be completely pure. Even though somebody might think that your fee is too high, you just said it. You didn't said it. The state of Louisiana said it. And they seem to think that it's fair and reasonable. Correct. You're absolutely right. And the fact that, you know, when we come to Louisiana, we have to find a place to live. When we come to Louisiana, we have to have transportation. When we come to Louisiana, we have to have the tools to be able to do the job. When we come to Louisiana, all these different things that we need to be able to extend our knowledge and extend our help to the Louisianians, it costs money. So, you know, the fact that, that they think that we're out here trying to sell them, that's not what's happening. We're here to help. We have left our homes, we have left our families, our wives and our husbands, to do what we need to do to help the Louisianians. Exactly, and, and, and even though some people might think uh, the intentions aren't good, by and large, majority of people in Louisiana seem to be very hospitable. As a matter of fact, I think a three of your client, uh, of, the, of your three new clients, two of them, uh, one gave, uh, gave you a meal, uh, well, I forget what it was, uh, what what was on that meal uh, that, that, that the first client had? Ray Touffey, a Touffey. The other some client, rice, and I had some some some. Uh, 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 I had some a Touffey rice and and uh, broccoli, and, and and we have a client that gave us two jars of honey, and then we also had homemade some, homemade honey. She's a beekeeper. We actually saw the beehive. And we saw the honeycomb where the honey dripped down off of it onto our fingers. We saw the process being done right in our eyes. We actually walked in the middle of the, the, the path of bees. And she said, just walk through, everything's gonna be okay. Man, that was amazing. And we, and then we had some of the sweetest oranges all right off the orange tree. I mean, man, you, you, you name it. These folks are hospitable and they're ready to feed us every day. Boy, it's scary. I'm hoping that, that uh, uh, we don't come home too overweight. We plan on actually doing a seven-day water fast, so so that's going to help us. And and, and 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 you know, when we see our clients, we should be able to take on a little bit more. Absolutely. So once again, man, tell people who you are, what you do, and how they can get in touch with you. I'm Ricardo Barnes. I'm the prime adjuster of ICA Insurance Claims Advocates, um, and. Uh, we're licensed here in Louisiana, in the state of Mississippi. Also, we're licensed in Florida, 
and uh, our corporate office is in Florida, and we're also licensed in Texas. So uh, we're licensed public adjusters here to help your homeowners um, uh, and business owners address their claims. And, and um, if there's anything you, we can do to help, you just give us a call, 407-844-5435. That's 407-844-5435. Website? Website, yes, we, we, we're on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. I can't quote the website by, by heart, but at the same time, you can Google us. Got it. Thank you so much for letting the Entrepreneur This Podcast follow you on your entrance and introduction into the, the L.A. community, the Louisiana, L.A., Louisiana, what, what they call it, the NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana community. That's right, baby. <laughs> Baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Entrepreneurs Podcast and ICA Claims.